Hey YouTube, Long Boys Post 1975. There's a there's a question down there. Um, did you ever kind of find it hard to let a system go? And I don't mean that because it being discontinued, you know, its its life uh, span was over, but because you, you had sort of newer systems or, or superior systems, and yet this system, whether, whether it was you know one of yours or a family system, computer, console, whatever that was in with, was in the house, did you kind of you know ever find it difficult to let it go was there a, a, you know a connection to it because of what it meant to you you know what it meant to your gaming or you and your your, your family or your mates and you know the fact that you didn't play it anymore it kind of you may have bought games for it that even though you you knew when you were buying them you you weren't going to play it simply because it was important in your life this may sound like the stupidest question I've ever asked, but it, it, there's a reason I ask it. Um, I was in the loft today um, with a mate and we were rooting around because I'm still trying to find my G.I. Joes and I'm still trying to find um, all my vintage Star Wars figures and a whole bunch of other stuff up there. Considering I have the smallest loft in the world, I don't know why it's so difficult. Plus the other reason we were up there is, uh, it's so hot right now, it was the coolest place in the house. I just, I hate it when you can't get away from the heat. The only other place I can get away from the heat is my car, because it's got air conditioning. Um, unfortunately, you know, you can only drive so far, and I can't sleep in it, because then I'd asphyxiate. Anyway, sorry, waffling. Yeah, so we're up there, but we did find another bu big bunch of, um, you know, boxes uh, for, for Spectrum games, because you have no idea how many we have, because um, all mine and both my brothers are still up there. Yeah, so we're rooting around and we're going through this uh, this bunch of games and it's cool because I, you know, I, I have great memory so I can look at everything and just go, I remember that, I remember I bought that, I can remember what it means to me. And he pulls like two games and he's looking at me kind of like, dude, I don't get it. And I'm like, what? And he holds up Terminator by Ocean. Does anyone remember Terminator by Ocean on the Spectrum? Yeah, I think I played it once. It's bollocks. I mean, those really cool little cardboard cases that are like Batman came in, epic case. And uh, he held up, uh, what was it, Nigel Mansell by Gremlin, which is like 93, and he looked at me and goes, dude, you had a Super Famicom on a Mega Drive at this point, why are you still buying this tap? And I started giving this big speech, you know, which is, uh, well, because, you know, uh, despite the fact that they were superior systems, you know, quality of gameplay is determined by an idea, not necessarily, you know, the shiny and fantastic nature of its polish. And he went, bullshit, man, you had a Famicom on a Mega Drive, and I was like, yeah, all right. And I thought about it, and it was kind of, well, I, I played Terminator once, and I, I think I don't didn't even play Nigel Mansell. That's not to say the bad games or Terminator was a bad game, but I can't recall Nigel Mansell. I'm not even a fan of F1. Certainly wasn't back then. Uh, There's nothing wrong with the UR. And I, I, I think uh, actually stopping to think about it, it was. I didn't, I don't know, I, I felt if I, like I was cheating on my Spectrum because even though I had a Mega Drive, uh, I had a, you know, Super Famicom, I, before that I had a Lynx, a Game Boy, you know, a Master System. It was just, it was, the Spectrum was such an important thing in my life, in my household at the time. You know, it was my first, you know, it, my, my dad got it for us in uh, 82 and its official lifespan was 82 to 92 before it was discontinued. And then the games ran up to very early 94. But it was a big, you know, important part of my life. I, our old man bought it for us so we could kind of learn, you know, programming and educate us. And I guess it was his retirement plan. But we flushed that down the lobby because we just realised you could buy games and trade them with people at school and tape them off, you know, the dual tap, uh, tap, uh, tape decks, sorry, it's the heat, um, on the, the Hi-Fi Centre. But, yeah, it, it meant a lot to me, you know. I, it was my first experience of home computing. It was my first experience of arcade ports. It was my first experience of just games in general, this this world you could lose yourself in. And I, I think looking back, because I mean at this point we had a, a plus three and I very, very rarely played it. And by the time I bought Terminator, you know, I we were already come back from the States on our first vacation or holiday and um I bought, you know, like uh, Super Castlevania for the SNES. So there's there's uh, no competition but I, there was still, I still kind of felt obligated to it. I guess I didn't want to admit that it was now redundant and, you know, n no longer needed. Because as much as I loved all my new shiny equipment, that little beast was, you know... I don't think, even though I love my Mega Drive and Super Mario and anything these days, I don't think I will ever retain the passion, uh, you know, and love and appreciate and adore a system as much as I did that. Is it because it was my first genuine home computer? Possibly, but at the same time it was. It exposed me to this incredible world. So, yeah, I, I think 
I generally had problems letting it go. So I I don't know buying these games, although you know they weren't expensive as console got all cartridge games, you know, but they weren't cheap. You know, ten or twelve quid, especially like Terminator, because it was a premium license for Ocean, so that was probably twelve ninety nine. And I was buying games, knowing full well that I was probably never going to play them, and kind of the hope I don't know, hoping that yeah, you know, I still got your back, Specky. I still got your back. So yeah, the, the the question I want to ask you is, you know, within its own life cycle, not now, because obviously we, we we still have regrets and stuff on systems that we've bought that we never had the first time around, you know, like such as the Dreamcast, you know, it could have been amazing. But did you ever find it really hard to let go of a system? And I don't mean you already sold it, I mean you still had it, it you didn't play it and you just found it difficult. I think I may have just waffled complete bollocks there, but hey, I'd love to know what you think. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.